Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video. Now, some of you may know this idea, uh, as you can see by the title, we're talking about changing positions. Now, changing positions may happen during off season when you realize, hey, I want to trial at a different club for maybe an outside back position instead of a center mid position, or maybe it's halfway through the season, your coach says, hey, I need you here, or maybe you show up to a game and 15 minutes into the game, you get put in a position that you're not used to. This actually happened to me this past weekend. Hopefully I'll get some video for you guys up in the next couple of videos of that game, but I was playing left back and one of our center midfielders got injured. So I actually took the number eight position, which is the box to box midfielder or the Iniesta type midfielder who goes everywhere. That can be a little confusing. I've never played midfield before at a professional level. At a high school level, of course, a lot of the pro players have played center mid. That's kind of how it works usually is the better players play in the middle. No stress there. But at a game that's much quicker and everything's moving much faster, playing center mid or playing any, posi any different position in general is kind of difficult. That being said, if you study football, if you watch football, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. In addition, we had a great we have a great coach who walks us through that stuff. So today I'm gonna go through four steps that I look at when I'm asked to play a different position. All right, so number one on my list is study. So I'll throw some video up right now of what I'm talking about, but in this game versus a team called Quinns who will actually play during the season, I'm looking at my own two center backs who won't be playing this coming weekend. So I'm actually being moved into the left side center back position for this coming weekend. So that means I have to study because I'm used to playing outside back, which is a completely different position. There's a lot more running involved, hopefully, so long as uh, we can dominate possession in our game. And it's just a different orientation of where you are at the field. So in this current clip, I'll show you where the positioning of our center back is right here. And then in the next clip, what I'll show you is the type of stepping forward into space with the ball. So those are two really quick things that we that I can study for that particular position. Now I'm just giving examples, um, but I think it's very important that you study the movement patterns of each of the players. So if you have your own team to study, that's great. Obviously professional teams are on TV all the time and now that sort of quarantine is coming down, whether it should or not is up for debate, I'm not debating that, but uh, if we, if you can watch soccer on TV, that's a great way to learn the movement patterns of players that really know what they're doing in their position. So that's super helpful. So make sure you're studying the position that you're supposed to be playing, especially when you're switching. All right, so the next one, number two, is training. So training at a different position. Now this might involve, for myself, practicing defensive headers. This might be practicing my long balls and distribution. This may also be practicing one-on-one -on -one defending. That's for a center back position. Now for a different position, it might be something else. For a winger, it might be cutting in and taking shots or dribbling down the line and doing crosses. Whatever you need to do, train those specific attributes of that player, of that position. And it's really helpful if you have a coach like mine who told me prior to the game, several days prior, hey, I need you in this position this weekend and I need you to be ready for it. That gives me time to go out and train on my own and just practice simple things. So for a center back, I've got to practice really simple turn, play, turn, play, turn, play, because that's going to be the majority of are my game is going to play really simple, really easy passing and make sure that we keep possession of the ball. Step number three is to visualize. Once you get a sense of how it looks on the field from training, and then you also are able to talk about and watch professionals do it, then you can kind of get a sense of when you close your eyes, this is what the field looks like from this position and from this orientation of the field. And then you get a better sense of what it should look like. Now, I might visualize winning headers against a center forward. I might visualize making a perfect 50 yard ball into our winger who's running onto it. I might make, I might visualize making a great last ditch tackle 
to their winger who beats our outside back. Any of these things are very important and it also helps get it in your head so that when you're in the game situations, it's super easy because it's already happened a bunch in your head. And oddly enough, your brain can't tell the difference between what you visualize and what happens in reality, especially if you really focus. And so what you can do is you visualize succeeding in each one of these things over and over again. And then as soon as you step on the field, it becomes absolute cake and you can do it super quickly and effectively. Step number four is pretty straightforward. It's ask questions. I actually reached out to two of my good friends who I know are soccer nerds and I said, yo, what can I do in this position? How do I play this position? Do you have any tips? And if there are center backs that you can think of, if it wasn't, a, if this person wasn't a center back already, what are the best center back, the attributes of the best center backs that you've played with in your career? And this is super helpful because I'm looking at it like I have everything to learn. I've got nothing to lose. I've never played center back before, maybe once or twice in college for five minutes at the end of the game when one of our center backs went off for whatever reason. That's it. So playing a full game at a pro level at a completely different position, I'm an open book. I wanna learn as much as I can. And I think having that open-minded mentality and not going into it super arrogant saying, oh, I've got this is really important because I'd much rather stay humble now, learn as much as I can, than be absolutely humbled on the field and get torched by some guy who takes me out of position and I get screwed that way. So the biggest thing you can do is ask questions, whether that be at training with your coaches, maybe you're talking to friends who are center backs or other whatever position you're going into. I use that example for myself or it's calling people up on the phone and saying, hey, do you have any connections to professional players who are center backs or whatever position? And can I get a hold of them and just ask questions because the more you ask questions, the more answers you're gonna get and the more you're gonna kind of tease out what the best options are during game-like situations. All right guys, so that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. So that is four steps that you can take when switching positions. Now, if you're switching positions, halfway through a game like I did this past weekend, you might not have a ton of time to sort of calibrate, hey, how do I do all these things? How do I visualize? How do I ask questions? Well, actually you can do that during the game with other players on the field, but I digress. Either way, make sure that if you do have the time to study like I do this week for this weekend's game and first round, that you really take the time to learn the new position. Number one, it's fantastic for your team. It's gonna help you play better, number two. Number three, it's gonna impress your coach because your coach says, hey, I can depend on this player for several different positions. Maybe not his or her natural position, but it's something that no matter what, I need him or her on the field because I know they're gonna do the job well. And that's really, really important at the end of the day. And at some of your level, at a club level perhaps, if you're at a showcase, proving that you can play different positions effectively is one of the things that gets a lot of people into college soccer and into professional soccer. It was true for me because I was able to play two or three different positions and use both my feet. So make sure you guys are studying, you're asking questions, you're visualizing, and you're making sure that you are getting all those details correct so that when you get out on the field, you do it really well, even if it's not your natural place. Thanks again guys for watching. As always, be awesome, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.